Well, hi there, Andrew Bell with you. And what a treat I've got for you today. You're the first to see through 36 to 38 Carina Crescent Broad Beach Waters. This is simply amazing home. Just under 2,000 square meters of land, European designed or themed. Just have a look as I talk today about our topic, but have a good look at this property. From here by the crow fly, it's about 1K to the beachfront. You know, short walking distance, of course, to everything in inner city, but in one of the quietest pockets of Gold Coast real estate you could ever imagine. Have a good look at this as I carry on. A bit of a landmark moment uh, for Queensland, where on the 15th of May at 3 p.m. precisely, the state's population hit 5 million. I guess that number is in keeping a little with what I've been talking in recent weeks about. And that is the fact that populations throughout the world keep growing in size all of the time. With that population growth, we naturally have to keep up with building supply. I want to touch on two points here. The first is brand new dwelling supply on the Gold Coast. Looking at small time frames is never healthy. So looking over the past five years, we see there were 19,000 new dwellings registered for sale. However, there was a need in that same time frame to build some 24,000 dwellings to handle the growing population. That means that over those five years, Gold Coast's new housing supply was undersupplied by 5,000 odd dwellings, which equates to undersupply in order of 20%. It's estimated that there are approximately 9,250 new residential dwellings or, or allotments approved but not yet developed or registered for sale here on the Gold Coast. Therefore, based on the underlying demand to build 5,000 new dwellings to keep up with the past, this equates to less than two year supply. Yet if we assume that the 5,000 under supply of the past five years were to be absorbed, then the real new housing supply drops to just 4,250 dwellings or about 10 months supply. That means we have an acute shortage. Looking a little closer at approved developments, we see most of those are in small infill projects where, for example, there were 121 new residential projects approved on the Gold Coast over the past 12 months, of which just 18, or a small 15%, were for projects with more than 50 dwellings. Amazingly, some 70% of all the projects approved had just one or two dwellings, townhouses fundamentally. If we look at all the resale market, where it of course is the bulk of the sales activity, we can look at this in three different categories. The first being detached housing, where there are usually around 8,500 sales per annum. Well, at present, there's just 4,850 properties listed for sale, which is about seven months supply. Not bad and could be described as a normal market. Now we move the apartment space, we see there are generally 10,000 sales per annum across the entire Gold Coast. And currently there are 3,150 apartments listed for sale, which is about four months supply. This means it is more of a seller's market than a buyer's market in the apartment segment. And finally, the townhouse market, where we generally see around 4,000 sales per annum. But presently, there are only 900 uh, townhouses currently listed for sale, which is just three months supply. This means that it is very much a seller's market in townhouses. Now out of interest, the four highest selling suburbs by sales volume on the Gold Coast is Upper Coomera with some 469 sales in the 2017 calendar year, Rabina with 308, Helens Vale 291 and Pacific Pines with 239. As you can see, three of the top selling suburbs are all in the northern suburbs and it just shows how strong the northern end of the Gold Coast is. Just a bit of a summary on the market as a whole. We certainly saw some reduced activity during March as everyone got prepared for the Commonwealth Games. Many started actually leaving town before Easter and it did quieten things down in our market. Now post games, it's been a terrific marketplace. And what has really started to become more apparent is that in most segments of the market, there is a shortage of supply of properties for sale. In other words, a greater buyer demand than there is properties for sale. This certainly suggests that we're going to continue to see price growth moving forward, but the degree of shortness does vary from one suburb to another, and we also see differences in price brackets. It's also great to see a return of some really strong activity from first home buyers. Well, I hope you enjoyed having a look through this magnificent home. 
Jackson Paradise, whose details are on screen now, is handling the marketing of this. And you really should do yourself a favor. Get down, have a look at this. It is simply an amazing home. The finishes, the style, the size, the privacy, the location, it is a must. Well, that's it for this fortnight. Other than to say, I'm joining a number of other CEOs on the 21st of June for the National CEO Sleepout to fight homelessness. Sadly, the largest growing proportion of homeless people is women with their children escaping domestic violence. The profile of a normal homeless person has changed dramatically, and so it's increasingly important that we provide safe shelter and basic food and water for this growing group of people. I'm honored and extremely pleased to be hovering close to $10,000 being raised so far through my efforts. Anyone watching today, if you'd like to make a donation anywhere from $10 upwards, I'd love to have that. The link's on screen now, and you'll be forwarded a tax receipt directly from St. Vincent de Paul. On behalf of the many homeless who really feel it, particularly during winter, it's a big thank you in advance. Well, that's it for now. Look forward to seeing you in the fortnight's time.